God bless everyone. This 4th of July. Like, share, subscribe. Keep up continually. It's getting more serious. If you haven't, go back check the other videos. They all build continuously. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, former flame, Shaney Jones, were nearly matching outfits at July 4th party photos. Now they have photos where outfits aren't matching, but it's similar. I will say that. But here's the craziest part. They tried the trick. So when you read the whole thing, you think you got to work down it. I usually work down the whole story, the whole title. Listen, it's right up front. This one's very in your face. Get this. I'm going to read it in order best way I can. I want to add a blessing to God and the glory of his word. We're looking at John chapter 11 starting. And starting at the fifth verse. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, the, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee and go style thither again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Right there, and think of, okay, we're getting to the story of Lazarus. He brought Lazarus through a lot, but he stumbled over his faith. And it's funny it says stumbleth, because he stumbled over his faith. But he got himself together as God ministered to him, and he began to do God's will. Okay, Psalms chapter 127, starting at the first. A song of degrees for Solomon, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Right there. When you are armed, when you're ready for war, you don't fear talking to people that are potentially enemies because you're ready for whatever they do. Same thing with God. When you have Christ, you don't fear what comes to you. You don't fear what you go through because you know the creator protects you. You know he's good to his word. The same thing. It's no different between us all. And help us. He helps us to do everything we got to do in our life. So you don't fear your enemy. Micah chapter 2. Let's go. Starting at the 5th. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Prophecy ye not. Say they to them that prophecy. They shall not prophecy to them that they shall not take shame. O thou that art named the house of Jacob. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses, from their children. Have ye taken away my glory for her? Ever, forever, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it's polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a more a sore destruction. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of a strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Right there, the countenance you carry with other people. Look, they're trying to compare a flame that Kanye had to Kim Kardashian. Birds of a feather. People say things that are in the Bible. Birds of a feather flock together. Now they're dressed alike. The woman who was previously his wife, and then a woman he had a jump off with, even though he's married. Come on now. Come on. The countenance is right there. It's no it's similarities. And in the story they're comparing them. Yo, Judges chapter 20. This ain't my at all. Starting at 37. And the liars in wait had hasted and rushed upon Gabeah. And the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons, for they said, surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them and beheld. Behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when 
the men of Israel turned again. The men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them, and them which came out of the cities they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them. They entrolled them down with ease over against Gebeah toward the sun rising right there. You know how Obama had the sunrise, different things. See, people use it as a moniker for their bringing a new day. No, Christ uses it as a sign of war that he symbolizes in uprising his people. Right there, yo, right there. God's symbols are symbols of war against the wickedness. Things people use to try and symbolize, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this great. God will take it and turn it into a symbol of war to all those who are wicked in his presence who come against him. Right there, trust the most high God. How's this mind? Judges chapter 13. Let's go, God. This is all glory to God, this God. Judges chapter 13, starting at the 17. And Mo Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name? Sing it in secret. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God with a capital G. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering that our hands, neither would we have shewed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such these things right there. This is what you need to know, husbands. Your wife is wise. She's wise as a woman. She is supposed to be a countenance to your bravery as a man standing face first to do the work of God. So you're to do battle. You're set for battle. She's set to instruct. If she cannot instruct you, you will be known of that through the Lord. You need to ask God for wisdom in a woman. They're supposed to have wisdom to help their husband survive things and countenance and derive and maneuver through this world. Job chapter 41. This ain't my. Start at the 18. By this kneesings, a light do of shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remain of strength, and sorrow is turned unto joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. You do not want to harden your heart. That's it right there. Don't harden your heart. When you hear the word of the Lord, people want to mock it. People want to laugh. People want to say, I don't want to hear that. But when you do that, God's going to say, I don't want to hear it. When you're saying, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. Before he throws you in hell, you're going to be like, please, please. In your mind, he harden your heart. He'll get rid of you right there. Put God first in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That's, a, that's always going to be the going theme in this Bible. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Come on. Acts chapter 7. Again, 27, but he that did his neighbor wrong, thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian. There he begat two sons, and when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord, in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for this place where thou standest is holy ground. Anywhere the Lord is is holy ground. Thus, everywhere we are is holy ground. Look at, Think of all the sins going on in this world. Everywhere is holy ground because it's the Lord's. Think of what people are doing. 
He's mad. He's angry because no one's giving respect to his ground. No one's giving respect to his presence. They're acting like he's not there. There is no God. God don't exist. People are numb to the reality. They're stuck in a dream world. They're thinking that, oh, I'm living life. No, you're stuck in a dream world, sir, ma'am. You need to know the Lord thy God. If you do not serve him, do not give praise, do not stand apparent. When you leave this earth, you will regret sorrowfully everything you did. Yeah, right now you feel good, big and bad, but you're not dead yet. When you die, it's done. It's over. It's done. Don't look for repentance. Don't look for a happy ending to you. You're thinking of, oh, I lived a good life. I'm going to die happily. I'm going to die safe. No, when you die, if you have not chosen Jesus Christ, the most high God, the Lord thy God, and honor his ground, you're going to pay a price greater than anything you can pay, ever. You're going to pay the price on everything you did. Do not ask for forgiveness. You can't. It's over. You had your chance. Just, just die in silence. But no man's going to be able to. Because when you feel that flame from the fire before he kicks you in, you're going to be begging up and down. But you're going to know there's no way out because of all you've done. Numbers chapter 21. How's this mock? Starting at the 25th. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Ar Arnon. Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, and let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire going out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It hath consumed Ar of Moab, and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab, thou art undone. O people of Shemosh, he hath given his sons that escape, and his daughters into captivity, and to Shion, king of the Amorites. He we have shot at them. Heshbon is perished, even unto Debon. And we have laid them waste, even into Nephah, which reacheth unto Modeba. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. God chooses who has a land. People can own it. He give them to, for, to him for a time. But when they're doing things not the way he wants, he replaces it. Right there, God puts leaders in place. It's not man themselves. When man praises themselves, it's cool. Beat your chest. Everything. You're going to lose your land. You're going to lose all of the rights God gave you because you're not giving praise to the most high God. Judges chapter 20, starting at the 35th. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites. That day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten. For the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites. Because they trusted unto the liars in wait. Which they had set beside Gibeah. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah. And the liars in wait drew themselves along. And smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait. What they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons. For they said, surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them. And behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. They literally, okay, they're witnessing these dudes come upon them. It's not that they're evil. They realized their evil ways and that God was behind them. So they saw how, remember, God sends evil upon people. They knew they were going to die. So they were standing there knowing they were going to die. So then they started running, but they got surrounded and killed. It's, I was this mock. Psalm chapter 83. Starting at the 11. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb. Yea, all their princes as Zebeah and as Zemaina, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession of my God. Make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth for wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest. And make them afraid with thy storm. They just did that. Yo, this ain't mob. Fill their faces with shame. That they may seek thy name. O Lord, let them be confounded and troubled forever yet. Let them be put to shame and perish. Right there. That's what God does to your enemies. People that 
conspire on you secretly, that conspire on you openly. That's what he'll do. He'll put them to shame and kill them. They they don't even see it coming because they do wickedness and they're comfortable in their sin. Yo, we talked about that. Their comfort in their sin right there. Yo, Kim and Kanye are comfortable in their sin. He just took Kanye's money and gave it back. What's next? What's next to do? Because he, if he continues evil, the only thing he could do is wipe him out. That's all. Because he gave him a chance. And then he gave it back. Psalms 106, yo. <laughs> yo. Starting at the 15. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness unto their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan, and covered the company of Abraham. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb, idolatry, and worshipped the molten mage. Image, mm, graven image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot God and their, sa and their savior, which had done great things in Egypt. They literally forgot all he did and were serving idols. Wow. Hebrews chapter 1. Now we're down to four. Being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he, said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits? And his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness and the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the, thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the works of thine hands. Right there, everything's created by God. Right there, even us, we're all created by God. Ain't no evolution. We're created by God. Luke chapter 16, starting at the 21st. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the t rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes being the torments and see if Abraham afar off. Yo, what did I say? People who are comfort, that have money, that have power, are able to do things that other people can't, and they glorify in the riches on earth. Where do they go? Right there. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip his the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Yo, he wanted the beggar. That he wouldn't let sit and eat his crumbs. To dip his dirt, his finger that he can cons he considered dirty in some water. So he could touch him in hell. So bad hell was. He didn't care how dirty this man was. He wanted his finger in water to touch his tongue. That's how hot hell is. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivedest thy good things. And likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this. Between us and you, there's a great gulf fix, so that they which would pass from hence to you to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. He's asking him to go warn everyone else. That's why people like me are here preaching like this. Because when it's said and done, it's over, the answer was no. He was begging for someone to at least go tell everyone that he cared about that Jesus Christ was real. No. That's what God said. No. You're going to burn. Just burn. That's all he told him. How is this mob? I'm trying to warn people right now. And they're getting mad. They're trying to contest. Saying, look at other religions that are going to send you to hell. That are lies. No. Daniel chapter 3. It's not a joke. It's not a game. Yo. Let me hold on real quick. This ain't a game. To man, woman, child, this ain't a game. When you die, you have two places that you can go. Heaven or hell. That's all. There's no in-between. There's no second chance. There's no do-overs. This isn't school. You go to heaven or hell. 
That's all. So don't play games. I'm not playing with this at all. I'm very serious. Very serious. I'm not playing with none of you suckers. None of you. None of you. Not one of you. Anyone who come against me, I'll handle you. I'm done. This is the truth. Believe it or not. You wanna you don't believe one of my get ready for him. My brethren know. My brethren are here. They know. They know. They didn't they ain't gotta speak. They know. You get me? Daniel chapter three. Starting at the nineteen. Then was Nebuchadnezzar, full of fear, in the form of his visage, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heap the furnace one seven times more than it what was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up shot. Yo, the people that the, he commanded to put them in died. All those men died just by putting them <laughs> They went to throw them in the furnace and died because it was so hot. That's how hot it was. It's showing you how hot hell is. Hell is hot. Those men died putting them in like the king said. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, Did not we cast three men then bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt in the form of the fourth is like the son of God. A man who was faithless saw the form and knew it was Jesus Christ. He was like, what? He was like, yo, hold on. There was three people. Those men were still alive, but all the people that took them and throw them in are dead. Listen to me. Don't be a send off for another simp. Nebuchadnezzar, through those goos, and there were send-offs. The send-offs perished immediately. Those three men they went to bow and throw in there unrighteously lived. And God preserved their life. He's the preservation of life. If you do not have Christ, you get death. All right? You're going to die. We're all going to die. But if you do not have Jesus Christ, you will not have eternal life. You'll perish and to go to the second death. Yo. This ain't mocked. I'm trying to teach them. Lord bless them. This ain't mocked. Job chapter 15. People are like what are you not lying? That's wickedness. Subdue that spirit in you. In Jesus name I subdue your spirit. Think. Starting at the 27. Because the cover of his face. With the fatness. And make a collapse of fat on his flanks. And he dwelleth in the desolate cities, in his houses, which are no inhabitation, inhabitants, which are ready to become heaps. He shall not be rich, neither shall his substance continue, neither shall the prolong the perfection thereof upon the earth. He shall not depart out of darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his recompense. Yo, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Vanity is their life. Money, trips, clothes, everything. That is their gift. After this, they die. Hell is their only place. If they do not turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and find eternal life through the salvation he brought and the life he put on the cross for us to survive. They're not going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're going to perish. Don't perish with them. Lose your vanity. Lose your thoughts of everything on this earth. Think of things above through Christ Jesus. Stop being foolish. That's what God's saying. Don't be wickedly endorsed to do things of this earth. And this is what matters to me. No. Put Jesus Christ first. And he gives you all things after. All things. He's all in all. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yo. Thank you, Jesus, right there. He's all in all. Stop being 
vain. Stop being consumed with this world. It's going to pass away. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. It shall be accomplished before his time. And his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine. And shall cast off his flower as the olive. It's so real. Joel chapter 1. Starting at the 16th. Is not the meat cut off before your eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of your God. The seed is rotten under his, their cloth. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down. For the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed. Because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry. For the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. And the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. God is not there, because all things are being dried up and burnt up. If he was there, it'd be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Through the fire, everything would succeed. But God's not there, so everything's burning up. Just like hell. Yo, God's not there. Joel chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus, yo. Thank you, man. Thank you for the understanding. I pray they understand, Lord. It's so serious. It's so serious. It's so real. It's so real. You got to notice. You got to. Starting at the second. If your parents didn't teach you, I'm teaching you now. Right now. You got to know this. Starting at the second. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever he like. Neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and a horseman, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots in the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb like the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Right there. Listen to me. They're coming. That's what's coming. That means you could try and fight it. Everybody talking about a gun and sword. That they're a beast or this or that. You won't be able to harm it when the, what's coming comes in this last day. You won't be able to do nothing because God made it that way. They're going to consume the land, burn it up, just like I read. Burned up everything in the wilderness, all the crops. It's not a joke. It's coming. Be prepared with your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your survival because salvation is where we're going to. When you are a believer... You're going to be saved. If you don't believe, you're going to die and go to hell. Just like that. Believe or not. When you don't, your ending's worse. People saying peace, 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 peace. Feeling good, good. No. If you don't trust in Jesus, you are going to be tormented sorrowfully forever. Forever. Eternity. Tell me a, a limit to eternity. There's not. I'm trying to tell y'all, there's no limit to eternity. It's dangerous. I'm trying to save people's life. What do you think I'm here reading for? I, yo, I never said, God, I got to read this. No, no. He told me, do my will. I said, yes, Lord. Because you do God's will when he says that. It's an honor. Thank you, Lord. I'm honored. Come on, y'all. It's not a joke. I don't play about this. You got to know Jesus. We see it in public. They're preparing the wickedness. They want us all to die. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Let me read to it. All right. Isaiah chapter 29. <laughs> Starting at the third. And I will camp against thee roundabout. And will lay siege against thee with a mount. And I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt be brought down. And shalt speak out of the ground. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust. And thy voice shall be as one of that hath a familiar spirit. Out of the ground. And they speak 
they speech shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as the shaft that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. At an instant, the same way all this is going to happen. Everybody's going to be chilling and destruction. Everything's going to change right away. People are going to be like, what, what, what? It's going to happen crazily. That you, like, emergency. You got to pick everything up and run. It's going to be that serious. But there's nowhere to run. Because only through Christ Jesus can you be saved. Guys, please listen. Please. I'm not doing this to be smart. I'm doing this because I care. Because I love people. People think, oh, no. I love people. I know what they're doing. I know what they're doing. Yo, trust me. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest in the flame of devouring fire. Even when he comes back, he's devouring everything as he comes back. In the multitude of all the nations, all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munition and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Yo, do you remember all your dreams? How long is your dream? You're, do you're dreaming, then you wake up. That's how it's going to happen. It's going to feel like a dream. But it's going to be real life for you. But if a person has Jesus Christ, you will be happy. You'll be cheering. Like, thank you, Lord. Because he protects all of his loved ones from death. All of his believers from death. You need protection from death. What's a night vision? People can't even remember all their dreams. That's how it's going to happen. Instantly. Oh, thank you, Lord. Please, save Lord, save them. Save us. I love these people. Like, they come against in wickedness. I know it's a familiar spirit. I just read that. When people come against you, it's a familiar spirit causing them to think wicked things on you. That is why you must be with Christ Jesus. He protects you. I know that. I've been through wicked things, way wicked than you can ever imagine. With spirits and men coming against me in droves. Saying hard things. Trying to do hard things. And they're all dead. He murdered them all. Some of them I seen. Some of them I didn't. Doesn't matter. I trust in him. It shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth. And behold that he eat. Yo. That's crazy. You ever dream you eating food? You wake up and it's not there. It happens so instant. Then you're hungry. But when you leave this earth and go to hell. You'll starve forever. There's no food. You'll be thirsty forever. There's no drink. How is this my... I'm trying to tell you. They're lying. They're lying to you. I'm telling you. You'll be hungry forever. Thirsty forever. You ever been thirsty? You can go get water. You won't be able to get nothing. You won't be able to eat nothing. It's going to be hell. You're burning up being tortured by what I'm going to tell you. I already skipped ahead and told you they're giants. They're giants torturing you. They're torturing you. Oh, man. I can't wait to tell you how. If that doesn't make you sway you, when I tell you how, that's crazy. Because, dog, they are, yo, they don't think gender. They're doing whatever they want to your body. And you feel all the pain. Every bit of it. But even more so than here because it's realer than real life. Do you think this real life? No, that's real life. I'm telling you. Dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awakeneth, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awakeneth, and behold, he is faint, because he's thirsty. You'll be faint forever. You'll never have energy to do nothing, because you'll never eat or drink. Oh, man. And his soul hath appetite, so shall the multitude of all the nations be, that fight against Mount Zion. Stay yourselves, and wonder, cry ye out, and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. You guys are in a dream world here. You're not realizing that we are in danger. Find Christ. Then you're safe. Once you find Christ, you're safe. You're good. Just trust in him and fight through this world. Courageously, without fear. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for saving us and dying on Calvary so we can live. If he didn't die, we'd be in this situation with no hope of getting away. Nothing could help us. 
Daniel chapter 7, starting at the 8th. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little... Oh, man, it's not even Revelation. And he got me reading Revelation to you. This is the dream. I just Thank you, Lord. I just read about a dream, right? This is Daniel's dream of the end of the world. You got to read to understand. I read a lot. I know what it's doing. Listen to this. This is telling you the end before I even get to the end. Thank you, Lord. I considered the horns and beheld. There came up one among them, another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, then this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Those garments was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from him before him. Thousands and thousands minister, mis, no, ministered up unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. The books were open for judgment. Yo, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and <laughs> given to the burning flame. <laughs> he was burned in hell as concerning the rest of the beasts. They had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions. And behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and the, came to the ancient of days. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him as dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That's him coming to rescue you. If you believe in Christ Jesus, you'll be rescued right there. While this evil's happening, you'll be rescued right there. He'll pick you up, you're rescued. Oh, now he had me go to Revelation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Revelation 1. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Starting at 11. Saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, in Ephesus, and into Samir Smyrna. Hold on. And unto Pergamos, and to Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Lacodicea. Philadelphia? Really? Y'all still want to say this ain't real? Really? <laughs> and I turned to thee to see the voice that spake with, with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burnt in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. The Alpha and Omega. Jesus Christ. Right? fear that is why you don't fear if you know jesus don't fear i don't fear nothing with christ yo nothing it's weird nothing not one thing do i fear i mean i could tell you some stories that meant when the 18 wheeler ran over my car no fear like i mean everybody would be scared no fear didn't break a bone no blood no fear i'm i got out like he looked scared I got out the car like, what are you doing? He thought me dead, but not through Christ Jesus. Is no death, because he preserves life. He's coming to kill death. Oh, thank you, Lord. I haven't even read that to you. He's coming back to kill death. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, starting at the third. His left hand should be under my head. And his right hand should embrace me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, 
nor awake my love until the police. Who is the, that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon our beloved? I raise thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There is she brought thee forth that bear thee. Set he what as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. We have a little sister, and she hath no breast. What shall we do for her, our, our sister in the day when he shall speak, be spoken of for? If she be a wall, he will build upon her palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar right there. You protect what you love you the youngest you protect the youngest because you love them that's the same way you protect your faith in christ if you can't protect your faith in christ and people can talk and sway you to wickedness then you're not for god you don't really believe people could come to me and talk whatever i know christ is real can you protect it like your little sister can you protect it like something that matters i protect his name i don't play about christ i don't play about his name people joke on it I'll preach against you. Trust me. Again, dude, I said something to with the word that came against me. Where is he? What happened to him? Dog, I haven't seen him post anything or say nothing since he came against me about that. He's gone. Where'd he go? Daniel, chapter 11. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Daniel, chapter 11, starting at the 30. For the ships of Chinnam shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. And arms shall stand on this part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make of desolate, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall the corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge, and to make them white, even to the one the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed, and the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, little g, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation by accomplished, for that this is determined shall be done. Listen to me, guys. Right now, accept Jesus Christ. Please, please, guys, I'm telling you, accept him. The little g gods are coming to sway the public. And if you do not do what they say, like a slave, they're going to try and kill you. He's coming on the world stage. If you don't accept him, he's going to try and kill you. He's going to try. Like the nation. Yo, this ain't mop. This ain't mop at all. Revelation chapter 2. God, yo, he wants me to tell y'all now. He's getting me there. Start at the 15. So as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Which thing I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man know of saving he that receiveth, thank you, Lord, and unto the angel of the church in Titera. Right, these things saith the Son of God. Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Women, women, repent. 
Stay away from this image on the world stage that you got to be a seductress, that you got to look a certain way, that you got to be seductive to a man. Don't buy into that. Stay away from it. Don't listen to them. Don't do what they say. Ignore them. You must. They're trying to get you to turn to a Jezebel. And if you don't repent for your sins, you will end in hell. Do not do the things of this world, please. Stop following the media. Don't let it sway you. Isaiah chapter 47. Starting at the 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. Which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments. And with the multitude of thy sorceries. Therein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit. If so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly pro prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored. Even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander everyone to his quarter. None shall save thee. Guys, all you people doing horoscope stuff, stop. 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 It's going to be in your face. Blocking your view. You won't see Jesus. Because you're doing all this horoscope stuff. You won't see God. When God comes back, you won't be ready. Because you're so worried about what you got to read online. It's wicked. Yo, let me tell you. Lord, please, because, please, because I know what you want me to say. They're cursing you. When you read those horoscopes, they're cursing you. It's not telling you the future. It's making your future what you read. It's a lie. They're cursing you. Literally, whoever wrote it is a witch, is a wizard, is a warlock. They're writing it to make it your future. It's not your future. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're doing magic. They're sorcerers. I'm trying to tell you. That's how evil of a world we're in. They're doing sorcery on you. When you read it, that becomes your future. Because you read it. Because you're intertwined, entwined with it. Read the Bible. That'll become your future. It makes your future bright when you read the word of God. It creates blessings, mercy. When you read those horoscopes. They're trying to kill you. I'm going to tell you why. Oh, oh, yo, I'm going to sum all of it up and tell you why. But it's sorcery. I just read that. Exodus chapter 3, starting at the first. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> why the bush is not burned? He was like, why is this bush burning up? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. You get this? We are on holy ground. This is the Lord's world. So we must do what the Lord thy God tells us and let him direct our path. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. There's only one way. Joel chapter 2. I'm telling you. Starting at the first. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. He's coming. Right now. He's coming. If he's not here. Remember he's going to be three days in the world. In the ground. Underneath. For it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness. And of gloominess. A day of clouds. And of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame. 
burner. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as a horseman. So shall they run like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people yet in battle array before their faces as the people shall be much pain all the face shall rather blackness yo these are your enemies coming jeremiah chapter 48 starting at the 42nd and moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he hath magnified himself against the lord fear in the pit and the snare shall be upon thee O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord, he that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. They that fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force, but a fire shall come forth out of the Heshbon, and a flame from the midst of Shion, and shall devour the corner of Moab, and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. Woe be unto thee, O Moab, the people of Chemosh, perisheth, for thy sons are taken captives, and thy daughters captives. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days, saith the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. Guys, that's us being judged, dealing with the times of the Antichrist. He's going to imprison people. He's going to try to make you and force you to do things you don't want to do. And if you do not do it, he's going to kill you. And if you don't have Jesus Christ, where do you go? To hell. He's going to come. He's coming. The Antichrist is coming. And he's going to put all you in the prison for no reason. He's going to imprison you for no reason. You're going to be like, get off me. Isaiah chapter 5. Let's, let's, let's get it going. Starting at the 21st. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the shaft, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still, and he lit, will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary, nor stumble among them. None shall slumber, nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latches of their shoes be broken. Yo, this is people that need to trust in the Lord of hosts. And the people that despise him will be left to their wickedness. You don't despise God. Learn his word. Don't say, I don't want to read this. I don't want to hear this. Have an open mind. Do not harden your heart once again. Isaiah chapter 10, starting at the 14th. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people. And as one therewith, thereeth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing and opened the mouth or, or peep. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the soul magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up or as if the staff should lift up itself is if it were not no wood therefore shall the lord the lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of fire and the light of israel shall be for a fire and his holy one nor for a flame and it shall burn and devour its thorns and his briars in one day and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field both soul and body, and they shall be as when a stand bearer fainteth, and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them, and it shall come to pass in that day, that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him.
that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. That's why you stand on Christ Jesus. He makes you the truth. Through him you become the truth. No other way. Through Christ. Only through Christ can you be the truth. Isaiah chapter 43. Starting at the verse. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he hath formed thee. O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee, since thou was precious in my sight. Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring the seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Right there. You trust in the Lord thy God. You have no fear. Oh, man. Okay. Obadiah chapter 1. Starting at 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as though thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually yet. They shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samara, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead, and the captivity of his host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zephyrathah, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in the Sepharphra, shall possess the cities of the south, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. He's coming back for everything that he left. God's coming back for what's his. Ezekiel chapter 20 starting at the 44th and ye shall know that I am the Lord then I have wrought with you for my name's sake not according to your wicked ways nor according to your corrupt doings O ye house of Israel saith the Lord God moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man set thy face toward the south and drop thy word toward the south and prophecy against the forest of the south field and say to the forest of the south hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God behold I will kindle a fire in thee and it shall devour every green tree in thee and every dry tree the flaming flame shall not be quenched and all the faces from the south to be north shall be burnt therein yo their daughter's name is north their daughter's name north how is this mock and all the flesh shall see that I the Lord have kindled it it shall not be quenched then said I, ah, Lord God, they say of me, do if he not speak parables. Guys, I keep telling you, the dude, he be like, ah, ah, ah. The dude with the glasses, he's mocking God. That's why he's so famous. He's like, ah, ah, ah. Daniel chapter 7. That dude's wicked. Starting at the 6. After this I beheld, and lo another, like a leper. Like a leper. Which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, and dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thorns were cast down, and the ancient of the days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like he was pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand thousand... 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, 
They had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. When he comes back, he's going to allow time for the Antichrist to trick people. Because people are going to do wicked things for him. He's going to allow it. Okay? He's going to let it happen. Because there are people that don't want nothing to do with God. And God's tired of talking to them. They want nothing to do with God. And he wants nothing to do with them. Because they're going to become another Satan. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 30. <laughs> Start at 27. Behold the name of the Lord coming from far. Burning with his anger. And the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation. And his tongue as a devouring fire. And his breath as an overflowing stream. Shall reach to the midst of the net. To sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And there shall be a brittle in the jaws of the people. Causing them to err. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnly is kept. And gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord. To the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And shall shew the lighting down of his arm. With the indignation of his anger. And with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down with smoke with a rod. And in every place there the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him. It shall be with the tabarets and harps, and, and battles of shaken will be fight with it. For Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. He hath made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of the Lord like a stream of brimstone. Both kindle it. Remember, when he can speak things into reality, the Lord can speak your reality. He doesn't need to dream up, do magic, scrum up things. Oh, Revelation chapter 19. Guys, here we go. Bless the Lord. For real. Revelation chapter 19, starting at 9. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God, capital G. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it now. I'm thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Thank you Jesus right there. I told you he's helping me. Didn't I tell you Jesus helped me? Didn't I say that? He's the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open. And behold a white horse. And he had sat upon him. Was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were at a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. I told you the word of God is Jesus. He was the living word. And he's alive right now looking at us. Yo. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it. He double smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to slaughter in God's stead. God is behind him. He's going to kill like crazy. He's not lovey dovey. He's a warrior. I said that. How many times? He wants to kill. He's not coming back to be nice. He's not coming back to say I love you. He's coming back to kill. Because there's unrighteousness. And all the people that mocked him. Guys. Find your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Fast. Fast. Very fast. It's not a game. It's not a game. Jesus Christ is coming. It's not a game. I read so many verses just now. In Isaiah. And Matthew. And Mark. And Joel. And Daniel. Yo. Hebrews, Luke, Psalms, all in this sitting. Run it back. Find Jesus Christ now. 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 He comes back. Game on. And everything's getting rocked. Everything's getting killed. All the people that came against him are going to die. As Christ believers, stand on the word of God. Fight for his name like it's your little sister. Like it's your little brother. Like it's something you're protecting. Like I'm telling you. I'm not saying this to be funny. He's not lovey-dovey. He's a God of righteousness. He's our savior. Our creator. Our protector. Our strength. Our wisdom. Our knowledge. To do. To think. 
to act, to survive. He is life and death. He's coming back to kill death. We haven't even read that one yet. He's coming back to kill death. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Help my brother. Bless us. Forgive us. Right on time.